Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Milan Save on Football Manager 2023. Now, since the last episode where we had a bit of a, an introduction to the team and an introduction to the objective of this save, we have played two games in Serie A. In today's episode, we are going to be playing our first two matches of the Champions League group stage against Monaco and Bayer Leverkusen. But before then, we've got a, a, a few things to run through. And we'll start off with some transfer news. So we made a sign and we made a deadline day sign in a bit of a panic buy. I just fancied signing someone on deadline day, really. This this guy's agent came to me um, and I'd already scouted him. My scouts had already scouted him and he looked like a decent enough prospect. He's only 18, 18 years old. So we signed him for 325k from Real Zaragoza. He has been immediately sent out on loan to Lenens, whoever they are. I'm thinking they're a Spanish side. Yeah, he's been sent back to Spain, basically. But um, a sign-in for the future who's relatively cheap. And I thought that was going to be the final bit of business for the window. That is, until Liverpool came in with an offer for our starting right-back, Davide Calabria. And the offer came in the day after the Italian transfer window closed and the day of the English deadline day. And <laughs> I was in an R in. I decided to, to try and get a decent amount of money for him. Tried to get £24 million for him up front and they accepted that when I suggested it to them so he moved. There's been problems, well a problem with a certain member of the team. Zlatan is not happy that we've sold Davide Calabria and uh, I, I basically told him when he came to me that Calabria wanted to go, he wanted to, to move on obviously to, to Liverpool but Zlatan still wasn't happy and I basically told him that there's nothing you can do now so just get over it. Not the best thing to do to Zlatan. So Zlatan doesn't like me at the moment. Um, he's got four people on his side, apparently. I'm not sure who they are. Salamakas, Rebic, Jungdal and Krunic. Only one I'm really concerned about there is Salamakas because he is one of our youth prospects. But I'm not really bothered about what Zlatan thinks. Interestingly, as Calabria was actually our, our, our captain... That means there's been a change in captaincy. So Simon Kier is now our captain. He was vice captain previously. And Sandro Tonali, I've appointed as a vice captain, the 22-year-old defensive midfielder. He's got uh, decent leadership and decent teamwork, which means he's, he's he's pretty well set to be captain in Simon Kier's absence. So I mentioned we played two league games off camera. The first of those came against Napoli away from home. And it was a very boring game, a nil-nil draw against Napoli. Means we're still unbeaten. Uh, well, if you take out of account, we're not unbeaten. I don't know why I said that. We obviously lost to Juve. But we're unbeaten in the past three games in the league, is what I meant. As we went on after Napoli to smash Monza 5-0. Olivier Giroud with a brace. The Englishman, Fikayu Tomori, with a goal. Simon Kier with one. And then Jean-Luca Rossi, who the only reason he was on the bench was because of injuries. He was basically my reserve attacking centre midfielder for the day, uh, the 16-year-old. And he managed to score. He scored on his debut, Gianluca Rossi. So one to, one, one to watch for the future, definitely. But of course, as I mentioned, we are mainly focusing on the Champions League and we have our first Champions League game against Monaco coming up away from home. And we'll play the Spezia game off camera then, come back for the Leverkusen game. So let's get into it. There have been a few games already played in the group stage of the Champions League today. It is the first match day we are on the Tuesday. Benfica beat Frankfurt and PSG and Juve came to a 2-2 draw. So an opportunity possibly for one of Celtic or Red Bull Salzburg to get off to a good start and get to the top of their group. But folks in our group, Chelsea of course playing away to Bayer Leverkusen. I'd imagine Chelsea are going to win that one, but you never know. Okay, so this is the lineup that we are going with for this game against Monaco. We've had a couple of changes forced upon us. Of course, we no longer have Calabria at right back, so Pierre Kalulu is now our starting right back, the 22 year old Frenchman. But in goal, we've got Mike Mainian as always. Uh, Kalulu has mentioned at right back. Tamori and Kier at centre back with Theo Hernandez at left back. Sandro Tonali is playing as deep line playmaker today. That's because Ishmael Benesa actually picked up an injury in the game against Monza, so that means he misses out today. Tommaso Pabega coming in as the ball-winning midfielder in defensive midfield. Alexis Salamakas is at right wing as Junior Messias is also nursing an injury. Charles de Ketelea moves into attacking centre midfield. Uh, Bream Diaz has obviously been playing there the majority of this season. 
and would normally be playing there. But because of the Rafael Leao injury, I've decided to play Raheem Diaz at left wing instead. And then we've got Olivier Giroud up front. In terms of conditioning, we're all in a pretty good shape. There's a, They're not all fully green in their hearts, but they're, they're light green, which is good enough. On the bench, we have a lot of youngsters. A bit of an issue with registration for the Champions League. Um, uh, a few players had to miss out. Zlatan is one of them, um, which I'm not too fussed about. But you can see there's a few players on the bench that don't actually have numbers. Gianluca Rossi is on the bench. The man that got his debut goal in the game against Monza. I doubt he's going to make an appearance here, but you never know what we'll be forced to do. I don't know if I need match sounds on to be able to listen to the Champions League anthem, but we're, we're going to find out. We'll tell them to go out there and impress us. Uh, I'll do a little individual team talk for each of the three areas. Just a little I have faith in you sort of thing. I don't want to talk. It's very cool. I see others mention it, but it is quite odd that the men around the Champions League logo in the middle of the pitch are in suits. It's, it's a bit odd, but that was incredible. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. Here we go. First opportunity of the game, and it's a free kick for us. Kalulu is going to take it. The free kicks and set pieces in general have been pretty great for us so far this season. I think it was three of the five goals against Monza were from a set piece. Headers from Simon Kier, Tamori and Giroud, I believe, as Ben has found himself through on goal and we've got a goal down. Wissam Ben Yedda, he was labelled as the man to, to watch in Monaco's side and that is why he's opened the scoring after 20 minutes. I was just about to do a shout, but we've, there's another highlight here and is it Theo getting sent off? Theo's getting sent off. Oh, from bad to worse. Things just go from bad to worse. What do we do here? We're going to have to drop... One of our attacking players, I think, into defence. Diaz is probably our... He's our worst performing player so far on a 6.6 in the, the attacking lines. So we're going to have to take him off. We're going to bring on Fode Balotore at left back. Wing back on attack rule, of course. And But we're going to continue with the Gegen press, the, the tactical style that we were playing. Uh, there's just going to be a bit more of a gap on that left-hand side, I guess. And Jacobs has the ball now to Matato. Kevin Volland looking for Ben Yedder again. Ben Yedder's going to get through, is he? Yes, he is. Ben Yedder with his second goal. I'm starting to think I underestimated Monaco. Is, 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 that, is that what's happened here? Have I underestimated them? I know we're a man down and I'm still playing a, quite an attacking formation or attacking tactic. But um, yeah, 2 0 half time. Terrible. Just terrible. Oh, that's that's great. The, one of the options at the the team talk is actually to say they're terrible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna thrash my arms like a toddler and say that they've been terrible. Um, there's no use Theo Hernandez being motivated because he's got himself sent off. So that's a bit odd. Don't really know what my options are here. I'm thinking of moving Balotelli to actually being a, a full-on wing back on attack. Um, Giroud's not having a great game. Kier's not having a great game at centre-back, but our centre-back options are very minimal. We've got Matteo Gabbia, who's a 22-year-old Italian national. He's, he's pretty decent. Um, and I think I think I am going to bring him on, actually, for Simon Kier. We'll see how Olivier Giroud gets on in the second half. Might be a case of bringing on Divock Origi. We've got four subs left to make, so no rush there. We've got Gianluca Rossi on the bench as well. Maybe he can be a super sub for us. Who knows? But yeah, it's, it's looking very thin in the ground um, in terms of our, our bench. The squad registration issue is proving to be exactly that. Free kick for Monaco. Can they make things even worse for us? Ben Yedda whips it in. That's a header off the bar this time and out of play. Thankfully, we didn't go down to three goals down. Elsewhere in the group, incidentally, it's 1-1 between Bayer Leverkusen and Chelsea. Leverkusen were in front, but Chelsea equalised through a Jorginho penalty as the ball goes into the box. Now, have we got a goal? Tamori! Tamori! He scored! 
Right, we've got our way back into it. I told you, set pieces, headers for this team seem to be a winning combination. Ball in towards Fikeyu Tomori, who just heads that off the inside of the post into the back of the net. Thankfully grabs the ball so you can sprint back to the centre circle and we can possibly salvage a point from this, maybe. Time is getting away from us and I realise I've not actually uh, done anything with Olivier Giroud up front. So we're going to do something with him now and that is take him off for Divock Origi. I was just about to do a shout there when this highlight came. So we'll see what comes of it. And then we, we might still have to shout at the team. As Toure wins the ball there in a 50-50 Origi. Yeah, that's that's not what we want from you, Divock. Giving the ball away in an advanced position. Win it back. Come on, Divock. Monaco passing it back to the goalkeeper, Newbell, who started this entire highlight. Long ball forward from him towards Voland. Tomori is just wandering out of position. And that's blocked nicely, I think, by Gabia and handled by Manian. We are going to shout to encourage the team. Tonali is apparently struggling. So we have got an option in defensive midfield on the bench. Tiamue Bakayoko, who we have got on loan, is a defensive midfielder who can come on. I think he's more of a ball winner, though. How, what's Pavega's passing like? 14. Bakayoko's is 12. Yeah, so we'll swap those around. Pabega can play as a deep line playmaker. Bakayoko is the ball winning midfielder. We're well into stoppage time and it looks like it is going to end 2-1 to AS Monaco. Indeed it does. So defeat in our first group stage game. Not great, but some good news is that Chelsea have also been beaten by our next opponents, by Leverkusen, by the same scoreline. So this could be a much more open group than first expected. So we've played that league game against Spezia and my oh my, it was a struggle. It shouldn't have been. You can see right there, 23 shots to Spezia's two. Spezia took the lead on the 72nd minute. We got a penalty very late on. Theo Hernandez dispatching that and then back a Yoko in the 93rd minute. So he picks up the ball here and I was not expecting this. What an effort. What a way to win a game that we should have been... Far and away ahead by this point of the game. We weren't, but we still picked up the three points. That's all that matters. That moved us up to fifth, I believe, in the league um, after everyone else had played their games. So it's going okay in Serie A. Not great, but okay. So it is game week two. It's our home game, our first home game in the Champions League against Bayer Leverkusen, the team that beat Chelsea 2-1 in the first match day of the group stage. That is their only victory in their past three games. They've lost both the Bundesliga games that surrounded that game. So maybe a chance to win today, especially given we are at home. So a few changes from our first Champions League game. I can't fully remember the squad that we put out there, but we've got Mainian and Gould still. I think the back four is the same. Apart from left back, Fode Balatore is in at left back because Theo obviously got sent off in the last Champions League game. In defensive midfield, Ishmael Benesa returns to the squad. He's alongside Sandro Tonali, so Tommaso Pabega drops down to the bench. Alexis Salamakas is playing at right wing today. Brahim Diaz in attacking centre midfield, and Antti Rebic at left wing. I think I played Brahim Diaz at left wing last time out and tried Charles de Ketelaer in attacking centre midfield, but I do think Diaz is, is much better suited in the attacking centre midfield role, hence why he's playing there today. Antti Rebic is a, a good option at left wing. As well, Olivier Giroud is the lone man up front on the bench. We we are starting to get some of our injured players back. Obviously, Benesa back into the the first eleven. Uh, Serginho Dest is just returning from injury. Junior Messias also just returning from injury, and Rafael Leao is only seven days away from returning to full training. So we should have him back in time for the two games against Chelsea, which will be next episode. But I think we've got a decent decent squad, a squad that should be capable, or a lineup at least that should be capable of beating Bayer Leverkusen here. So for the second time, we hear the Champions League anthem. I'm more likely to talk over it this time. I do like the graphics. The graphics are excellent. If there was a, a possibility of, I know it's very far-fetched, but of SI being able to get the licenses for some other leagues and having the official sort of match day graphics on there as well that would be great I think it adds to the just adds to the occasion of Champions League games as the ref picks up the ball we're about to see the suits in the middle of the pitch for some reason and let's get into this second match day in the Champions League 
I've just actually realised we are one of the two early kickoffs in the Champions League today, so the other game in our group isn't actually happening until 8 o'clock on this day, so we've got a chance to, to, to give them something to chase, I guess, if we can get a positive result here, as Simon Kier who I actually rested for the league game against Spezia, is back in the squad today. He was on the ball there. Kalulu inside right back. Nice little short pass in play from us here. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a bit more confident now we've got Benesa back in the squad. He is a, a real focal point of, of the tactic that we play. As you can see here, he's making a nice run with the ball. Now Antti Rebic plays it out wide to Toure on the overlap. Now, Toure with a chance to get a ball in. It's blocked. Toure was actually the guy who got the assist for that youngster. So Gianluca Rossi. When, when he scored in the league game against Verona, I want to say, he got a great assist with that one, a nice chipped cross from deep. But Toure on the ball once more, as we seem to be on the attack. Rebic on the left-hand side, chance to get a ball in. He's got to be aiming for Giroud, surely, in this one. Instead, it goes towards Salamakas, and it's 1-0. Alexis Salamakas with his first goal of the season, an excellent header. Headers, as I've said, and will continue to say, seem to be our best way of getting goals so we've got a nice little reverse angle of this one here for the replay Rebic with the ball down the left stops has a look back post Salamakas 1-0 corner Ishmael Benesa to take can we get a second towards Giroud Giroud with a header and he's got it it's his fifth goal of the season whenever the ball goes to Olivia Giroud in the air you just know it's destined for the back of the net most of the time he had a bit of a stinker in the league game against Spezia uh, off camera but I, I know he's going to come good eventually excellent ball in from Benesa and Giroud with a beautiful run and an excellent header and we're two goals up here at the San Siro to reach half time and it is a game that we have entirely dominated we've had 10 shots not many from close range apparently only two on target our XG is a lot better than Bayer Leverkusen's though who have we have only allowed to have one shot so far another set piece and another opportunity for a possible third goal Sandro Tonali to take the free kick once more eventually. And it's a beautiful finish. Sandro Tonali. Great finish. 3-0 to Milan. And it looks like we are going to be joining Leverkusen and Monaco on three points in this group. That I know I said it at the end of the last game. But it looks a lot more open than I originally thought it was going to be. It'll be interesting to see how Chelsea get on in the other game against Monaco. If Chelsea pick up a win then all four teams are going to be level on three points. Hudson Adoy. Uh, has the ball now. Hudson Adoya didn't have any clue he played for Leverkusen. Played it through to Demobay, but that is a terrible finish. In fact, no, it was blocked by our left back, Balotore. So good defending from him. Ball into the box and Patrick Schick with the header. I was completely oblivious to what was happening there. Schick has got a goal back for Leverkusen. Just over half an hour to go. Hopefully this isn't a, a, some sort of crumbling from us. So after that goal, we are going to make a change. We're going to take Tonali off. He's looking a bit tired out there. He's, he's played well today, to be fair to him. He's on a yellow card as well, so we don't want him to, to pick up a red and have another man suspended. So we will bring on Bakayoko, the man who got the winning goal against Spezia. Uh, elsewhere in the team, I think everyone else is all right in terms of the conditioning and in terms of rating, it's fine. Simon Kier is, is starting to concern me a little bit. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with him in defence. I think Gabia could start to become our starting centre-back alongside Tamori. Highlights coming thick and fast now. Kalulu played it to Salamakas. That's somehow fallen to Benesa. No idea how. Salamakas' touch was terrible, but Benesa is dispossessed. And now Leverkusen coming forward with the ball, and this looks dangerous. Schick is on for a second here, possibly. It's Schick with a shot, but it's straight at Mainian. Mainian? Mainian. Let me know in the comments. How do you say his name? Mike Mainian or Mike Mainian or something completely different? So we look like we've got a, a few tired legs out there now as well with just over 10 minutes to go. Tamori has been outstanding for us so far this season. He's been all right today, not great. So Gabia is going to get another appearance for us and he'll come off the bench to replace Tamori. We've got a, a game against Fiorentina to think about as well at the weekend. Fiorentina are a side who are doing quite well this season. They're top of the league. Uh, they beat Roma in one of the league games, which uh, I was not expecting. And I think with that in mind, we are going to rest some players. So Brahim Diaz is going to come off. Charles de Ketelaer is coming on for him. Divock Origi is going to make a Champions League appearance in place of... Giroud's doing all right out there, you know, in terms of his condition. So we'll, we'll take Rebic off because we will be needing him against Fiorentina. It's Kalulu. Inside to Benesa. Benesa dispossessed by Hlozek. 
And this could be a chance for a second goal for Leverkusen. It's Hudson Adoy. He's through on goal. It's Hudson Adoy. It's blocked brilliantly by Balatori, who's done excellently in defence today for a man who's playing as an attacking wing back. His defensive uh, skills today have been very impressive as Benesa picks up the ball once more from Kalulu. I'm wondering whether Benesa is a bit tired. He, this is his first game back from injury. Should I have taken him off? As Kalulu finds a beautiful through ball to Di Ketelair, and that is surely a trip and a penalty. And it is. We have a chance to get our three goal lead back. Surely he's going to he's going to the, the VAR monitor, but that looked like a very clear and obvious trip from the Bayer Leverkusen defender. We're checking with VAR. It's probably going to take a lot less time than it does in real life. Here he goes. What's he going to do? He's pointing to this spot. It is a penalty. Chance to get our three goal lead back. And I think it'll be Giroud that steps up for this. It was Theo Hernandez that scored our penalty at the weekend, but obviously he's not playing today. And I think that was because Jury had been taken off by that point. The text has just said it was surely a dive by De Ketelier. I thought that was a very clear penalty. And the referee agrees. So up steps Jury. Can he get his second of the day? He can. A beautiful penalty from Olivier Giroud. And that is the three points, or at least it should be the three points, signed, sealed and delivered for us. Our first three points of the group stage and in pretty impressive style. There is the full-time whistle. It has finished here. 4-1 deserved winners in the end. Leverkusen doing well to come back into it slightly in the second half. They had a few more attempts, a few more chances, but we always looked the better team and we've proven that we were. So temporarily, apparently, that takes us top of the group. I think that's wrong because I'm pretty sure in Champions League, uh, the, if you level on points, it goes on your head-to-head. -head. So Monaco beat us, so they should be above us. But we'll, we'll see what happens in the Monaco-Chelsea game. I'll come back with that in a sec. So Chelsea did, in fact, win their game against Monaco 3-2 in the end. And we'll take a look at what that means for the group table. And it means it's looking like this. Now, I need to check the rules here because I'm pretty sure that it goes on head-to-head -head after points, doesn't it? It goes on results between teams. So not really sure what's going on there. But interesting, after, after two games played, so a third of the Champions League group stage gone through. We'll take a look at all the groups just to see how everyone's getting on. So Benfica and Marseille doing well in the, well, I say doing well in Group A. If you look at their points, actually Marseille and Atletico are both on two points. So that's quite a, a, a tight group. Same with Group B, Man City struggling in there. They've only picked up the one win and that was against FC Copenhagen, losing to Barcelona. Ourselves and Chelsea occupy the qualifying spots in our group. Celtic are top of their group, a lot different to real life where they've just been knocked out on two points. PSG are the, the other side there, but obviously still very tight. Bayern uh, have a 100% record. Uh, the first team we've come across is with a 100% record. Napoli are just behind them. I'm assuming Bayern have beaten Napoli then. Yes, they have. Uh, I would imagine those two would go through from that group. Shakhtar surprise leaders in Group F. They have a 100% record as well. They beat Spurs 1-0 in this game week. Real Madrid, 100% record in their group, top of the group with Leipzig just behind them, still a bit close for the second qualifying spot. And then in Group H, Liverpool with a 100% record and Inter in second, but level on points with Ajax. So that's going to be a tight group as well. So looking ahead to the next episode, as, as I've said many times previously, as this is a, a Champions League focused save, we will be back with both of the next Champions League group games. They're back to back uh, against Chelsea. So what I thought was going to be our toughest opponent in the group, uh, still will probably prove to be our toughest opponent in the group. But yeah, we'll be back for those games. We've got Fiorentina in the league and Sassuolo in the league in the meantime. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified. And I'll see you next time.